Hello class in this section, we, or in this video, we will be covering section 7.3, which is simple interest. And there are 10 problems in this section. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is the same description for two problems. So I put it up at the top. It says the principal P is borrowed at a simple interest rate R for a period of time T. Find the simple interest owed for the use of the money. Assume 360 days in a year. So for part one, it says P equals 200, R equals 2%, and T equals two years. So my interest rate is I equals PRT. Now it's very important that you understand that T must be in years. So this guy right here must be in years. And we left out for number one because it is in years. It's two years, okay? So we just took the $200, which is our principal P, times our rate, 2%, times two. And if I type all of that in here, I mean, I can't type in the dollar sign, but I can type in 200 times 2% 2 times two. And I get eight. Now for number two, it says, um, P equals 4,000, R equals 6.0% and T equals six months. Now this is not in years. So we have to convert it to years. So six months, I would multiply by the conversion that one year equals 12 months. Now, which way should I place this fraction? Remember, you wanna get rid of the months and you wanna end up with years. So you wanna put the months at the bottom so they can strike out these months and then you'll be left with the years at the top. So I did one year over 12 months and then the months canceled and I typed in six times one over two. Oh, one over 12, I'm sorry, not one over two. That was 12 months down there. And I ended up with this, but I went ahead and converted it to a decimal. And so I ended up with that 0 0.5. And so it's 0 0.5 years. So now when I go to calculate interest, it's gonna be P, 4,000 times R times the years. And P, which is 4,000 times 6.0% times 0 0.5 years, I end up with $120. Now, number three is a little bit different. So number three says um, the principal P is borrowed at... Principal P is borrowed at a simple interest rate, R, for a period of time, T. Find the loan's future A, future value A, or the total amount due at time T. So P is 14,000, R is 9.5%, and T is three years. Now for simple interest rate, we do have another formula on our sheet. So under this whole chapter is gonna be all of this whole rest of this page. So, so far we had only used this and then we talked about sets, right? Now we're finally getting into all the financial prob uh, formulas for chapter seven and eight. No, I think it's just chapter seven in this book. So we are covering this section right now. Simple interest is this whole section. So we're only gonna be using these two formulas. So this one is for interest, and this one is for the future amount, A, okay? P is the present value. A is the future value, okay? It's the amount afterward. So I'm right, for future value, I'm gonna use the correct formula, and I'm gonna put everybody where they belong. And I'm not gonna put an imply there, I'm gonna put an equal sign, because A equals this, and this equals this. So P I placed in, one is just the number one, plus R, which is 9.5%, times T, which is in years, so times three. 
And I put all of that in the calculator. And it does give me 17,990. Now number four says the principal P is borrowed and the loan's future value A at time T is given. Determine the loan's simple interest rate R. Okay, so they tell me P is 700 and A is 72.45 and T is one year and they want me to find the interest rate. Now there are two ways to do it. Okay, well, you can use either formula. And I didn't do it the other way, but I'm going to in a second. So I could use this formula. I plugged in A, I plugged in P, I plugged in, oh, I didn't plug in R because I don't know what R is, but I plugged in one year for T. Then what I did was I took the 700 and I distributed it to this term and this term. So 700 times one is, or 7,000 times one is 7,000. 7,000 times R times one is 7,000 R. Then I solved for R. So I minus the 700 over, got this value, and then divided by the 700 in front of R, and I got this decimal, and then I did convert that decimal to a percentage. Now, the other way is to use this formula. So if this is interest, that's going to be 7, 2, 4, 5, what you ended up with, minus what you started with. That would give you the um, amount of interest that was paid. And then P, which was the original, 7,000 times R times T. So 7,000 times R times 1 is just 7,000 R. And if you notice, I'm in the exact same spot as down here. So I would divide by 7,000 to get R by itself. And then I would end up with 245 over 7, oops. 245 over 7,000, and then I'm gonna hit second and this. And so it's gonna take that old fraction and it's gonna convert it to percent. And I get 3.5%. Okay, and so that's the same as we got down there. I just used the calculator in a different format. Okay, so I think this one we will see again when we get to the test review. And in the test review, I found that this method was shorter and a little bit easier in the brain. Um, you don't have to do all this complicated distributing. So I do do it this way on the test review. And I think there's another problem. I don't know if there is. We have another problem that's very, very similar. So I will do this one as well using the alternative method. So I equals P R T. So here it says the principal um, P is borrowed at the loan's future value A at time T is given. Determine the loan's simple interest rate R. So if I wanna find the interest rate, I would take what I have afterward and minus what I started with. That tells me that I is equal to Minus 8,2040. So then if I'm going to put everybody in this formula, it's going to be 2040 in place of the interest, um, 8,000 in place of the P, R is unknown, and T is three years. So then if I multiply these together, I get 24,000 R, which is exactly what we would have ended up use doing it this other method, okay? So I'm gonna divide both sides by 24,000. And let's do that in the calculator. So 2040 divided by 24, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna hit second and convert to a percent. Oops, that was the wrong button. I'm gonna grab that and hit second convert. Second, convert to percent. And I get 8.5% for R. <clears throat> so now for number seven, it has the same directions for number six and number seven. 
So it says determine the present value P that must be invested to have a future value A at simple interest rate R after time T. So they give me A, R, and T, and they're asking us to find P. So this is the only formula I have that has both A and P in it. So I plugged everybody where they belong. T is in here, so I could just plug in four. So 4,000 for A, P I don't know, one plus R times T. Then what I did was I just put everything in this cap in this parentheses in my calculator. Since they were all numbers, I could do that. And so that's what I typed in a calculator, and it does spit out 1.96. Then if I'm trying to solve for P, this is multiplied by 1.96. So to get rid of this, I would have to divide by 1.96. So 4,000 divided by 1.96 is this value, but it says round it to the nearest cent. So this six will cause this one to go up. And so it's 2,040.82. Now number seven is very similar, except this time they don't give me the time in years. So I do have to convert the six months to a year. So that's one year over 12 months. That means six times one over 12. We've already done that in the calculator and it was 0 0.5. Then we're gonna have this. So I'm gonna plug in A, which was 2000. P is unknown. One is a number one plus R, which was 12.5% times T in years is 0 0.5. So I typed all of this just as it is in the calculator and it spit out this number. Then to solve for P, these are multiplied, so I have to divide by that decimal. And when I divide it on the other side, I end up with this. And so I don't know if it's exact or if I had to round. Divided by 1.0625. Yeah, I did have to round. But here, the two does not change the five. So it just stays 1882.35. So for number eight, we have, in order to start a small business, a student takes out a simple loan, interest loan for $7,000 for three months at a rate of 8%. One, how much interest must the student pay? And B, how, find the future value of the loan. So for the interest rate, um, and I could have actually done the second part, differently. I'll show you in a second. So um, the interest rate for part A is P times R times T. Now remember T has to be in years and right now they're saying the time is three months. So we have to do three months times one year over 12 months. When you type these fractions in the calculator you do get 0 0.25. So that's the equivalent is 0 0.25 years. So then I plug everybody in. I equals the P times the R times the T in years. When I type all of that in the calculator, it does give me 140. Now here to find the future amount, I went ahead and I put all this in here. However, there was another way to do it because I know that the future amount is gonna be what I put in plus my interest earned. So in this case, it would have been the original amount that went in was 7,000 plus the interest was 140. And so I get that same 7,140. Here I use the actual formula to plug it in and I get the same thing, okay? I just think this is a little bit simpler than the formula. Once you already have I in it anyway. Um, now for number nine, it says, and, and actually this is equivalent to this, and I'll explain why before I move on. So if I were to distribute this P, notice that it would say A equals P plus PRT. And we already know that PRT is the formula for interest, okay? So that is the reason why those two statements are exactly the same statement, okay? Now, number nine says, suppose that you borrow $3,000 from your friend 
and promised to pay back 4,755 in three years. What simple interest rate will you pay? So we took 3,000 for the borrowed amount, that's the principal. A is the amount that you're gonna pay back, 47.55. T is the amount of years, which is three years in this case. And I took the second formula that we have for simple interest and I plugged everybody in. And so when I plugged everybody in, I you know, did this distribution and then solved the equation. Remember the alternative way to do this problem is to figure out the interest. So take what you're gonna pay them back minus what you borrowed, and that will give you um, the amount of interest that you're paying them. So then if you take this equation, the 1755 goes in for the interest, the 3000 goes in for the rate, and then T is three. And if I multiply these together, I get 9000 R, which is the exact same line that I get over here. So we know these two methods are equivalent. Now in my calculator, I would type in 17.55 divided by 9,000, and then I would hit second, convert to percent, and it gives me 19.5%, which is the exact same thing that we got. I just feel like this way is a little bit more difficult. So again, on the test review, I always do it. I do it this way. Now, number 10 says, to borrow money, you pawn your guitar based on the value of the guitar. The pawnbroker loans you $1,080. One month later, you get the guitar back by paying $1,272. What annual interest rate did you pay? Um, and so the P value is what you got from the guitar. That's the amount that you borrowed. This is the amount afterward that you paid back. And T is one month, because it says one month later you got it back. But remember, T has to be in years. So we multiply by one year over 12 months, and we get, um, when I type it in there, I get a decimal, or I get one over 12. But when I try to put it in the decimal, it gives me this. But you're not supposed to round in the middle of your steps. You're only supposed to round at the very end. So I have no choice but to use the fraction one over 12, okay? Now this bottom part is the old method. The method that I keep telling you that's the more complicated method. So I'm not, I'm gonna erase all of that and do it the other way. It says, I don't know, but we'll keep going. So we can't round 0 0.0833 repeating. So we have to use fractions. So then if I want to know what the interest rate is, I'm going to take the amount that he paid, 1272 minus the original amount borrowed. And that turns out to be 192 in interest. So then if I take this equation, Um, interest rate will be 192, or interest value. P is 10080, R is R, because I'm trying to find R, and T is going to be 112. Well, I can multiply those numbers together. So I get 192 equal to 1080 times 1 over 12 is 90R. And then I can divide both sides by 90 to get R by itself, 192 divided by 90 is 2.133 repeating equal to R, but I can convert that to percent. So I'm gonna take this decimal and I'm gonna hit second and convert to percent. And it tells me it's this percent. Um, and I believe in the calculator it does tell you to round to the nearest tenth. So then this would be, 
and that is it. So this is the annual interest rate, which makes sense. I don't know if anybody's ever gotten one of those kinds of pawn loans. I'm sure y'all read my story. I grew up in poverty, so I've pawned all kinds of things, including my calculators when I was going to college because I would buy them big, fancy $300 graphing calculators, and then I would just pawn them. And I would also buy them from the pawn shop because they were a lot cheaper than buying them at the store. I don't know if the pawn shops still do that or not, um, because I know the value of those things have are not as significant as they used to be. But um, it is possible that you could still find graphing calculators at the pawn shop. Um, but I know that they do charge you big amounts like this. Their annual interest rates, normally even with credit cards, the annual interest rates are like 200 and something. So this makes sense for the particular problem just based on my experience. Okay, that was the end of 7.3. So in the next, I will see you guys in the next video.